Thanks for joining me here at For Real. Today's video is a bit of a special one and one that I've been wanting to make for quite some time. Jeremy and I recently spent three days in Sihanoukville and this video is an exploration of what we found when we went there. We knew what to expect in some ways because of the videos that we would watched ourselves and um, the reports that we'd read on the news and things like that. But that was one of the main reasons that we wanted to go was to see what we thought of it ourselves. So Jeremy and I spent three days in Sihanoukville and it was um, a really good length of time to get to grips with the place. We had enough time to go around to a lot of different parts of the city. So we saw the bits that were predominantly Chinese, all of the um, unfinished buildings that have been left there um, since um, the changes to the gambling rules and COVID meant that those buildings were just never going to be completed. So we saw a lot of that. We also went to more traditional Cambodian areas such as the main market. We went to a pagoda, we went to some of the beaches. Obviously it's changed a lot in the last 10 or so years, but I think it's still really worth a visit so don't just think of the place as a stopover on your way to the islands. Think of it as a destination in its own right. It's not necessarily um, a place that you go just to see beauty, but it's certainly interesting. And interesting is good, in my opinion. Let's get started. Welcome back to For Real. It's very early in the morning once again, and we are off on another trip. This time we're going to see a Nukeville. Are you excited, Jeremy? Yes, so much. Yes, we're flying, so we're about to go to um, the post office to get the shuttle bus to the airport. So, let's go. So we've made it to the post office. It's just a really nice position, this post office, right across from the uh, river. So this is it here. I haven't opened the gate yet, because we're the first people here. So we reached the airport pretty early and we're the only people in the whole list. No one else. But we're at domestic, which is downstairs. So this is international, probably flights don't leave till later on this morning. So we're gonna get downstairs. That was a circle K. This is all new. This wasn't here last time we were here. very bare bones but nice and clean we go outside and get a taxi into town it should cost around 20 bucks Our first look at the coastline. We're very close at this hotel, but look at that building, that's just crazy. Behind this hotel, there's a whole stack of buildings. Look at this. It's crazy. Absolutely fascinating. I can't wait to get down there and get amongst it actually. It feels like a different country. I mean, we haven't been out on the ground yet, we've just kind of come from the airport, but driving here, you have a sense that you're in a completely different place. It's definitely interesting. We're in room 318, this is a deluxe king, I think she said, I can't remember what we booked, but let's go in.
Right, so it does have a really good solid feel about it. Um, newly built but really nice um, standard of finish on everything. So we've got a cupboard here that's got some shelves in it. This one here has a light inside which is kind of fun. A couple of robes in there. I might get Jeremy to uh, model one of those for you later on. There's a safe there. There's a couple of drawers at the bottom. You could put shoes in there if you wanted to. More drawers underneath. So there is a lot of storage. Little tiny fridge. Nothing inside. I already checked. There's a desk over there at the other end and bed here. They have a 24 hour reception that you can call. She was telling us about that. And a nice sitting area with one chair. The floor's nice. I like that. Check it out. This is really quite flash. Very nice. There's a bath here and you can see right through <laughs> to the bed. And behind me, of course, is the toilet. So you're going to want to avail yourself of the blind that is there and pull that down when you are using, at the very least, the toilet facilities. There's a good range of products on offer here. Yeah, it's, it's all fitted out very nicely. I like it a lot. Nice toiletries on the wall here. I like it when they do it this way so you don't have all those little tiny single-use bottles all the time. So we've got shampoo, conditioner and shower gel. Oh, okay, we've got the microphone shower and also the rainfall shower. Check it out. So we're one street back from the coast. There's the Novotel there. And down here there is a big vacant block. So I'm thinking that in time, and down here is just a car park, in time this view is not going to be here anymore, for this hotel at least anyway. But the ones across the road from us, <laughs> they are monsters. Look at that. Look at that, they fill up the entire screen pretty much. Wow. We went for a walk to find some lunch and the contrast in wealth that we saw just 100 metres from the hotel was enormous. There are people living permanently in these shacks. Bad enough in dry weather, but imagine how awful this would be in the wet season when the ground is saturated. We saw shacks like these in many parts of town, and sometimes people have made camps on the ground floors of the unfinished buildings. Okay, we found this really nice Indonesian restaurant. Here's the name of it here. There you go. The prices are quite reasonable. So this drink here, I've never seen it before. Okay. Quite nice. Claire got the beef ring dang, looks amazing. After lunch, we walked back around to the hotel and I just wanted to show you what the streets are like. We noticed that the mix of businesses was different to what it is in other parts of Cambodia. So for example, we didn't see little pharmacies or corner shops, things like that. And as um, a lot of people have said in videos that we've watched of Sihanoukville, most of the signage, particularly in this area, is in Chinese. There's a lot of layering going on, sort of businesses behind other businesses and on top of other businesses. So you never quite know what's actually there. Walking around, you do get a sense there's a lot more going on behind these facades than what is immediately obvious. We're going to breakfast. Yes, we are. <laughs> I must say, the shower, the towels, the sheets, the beds, 
everything in that room is just lovely. Very nice. We really enjoyed the breakfast each day. They changed out some of the things, for example the fruits, so that there was variety as well. It was just great. The first thing we wanted to do was get to a high vantage point so that we could have a good look down across the city and get a sense of the size of the place. We saw on the map that a good place to do that would be Watler Pagoda. So we organised a tuk-tuk to take us there, but what we didn't realise is that there are several access points to that pagoda, uh, according to the maps, but on the ground there's actually only one road that goes through. Anyway, to cut a long story short, the um, tuk-tuk that we ordered tried to take us in up a very, very, very steep road and we had a very near miss of what would have been quite a serious accident, I think. Okay, Bong? You okay? Yeah. Oh, 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 shit. Okay, so we just tried to go up the hill to the um, pagoda and um, had a bit of an accident in the pass app. <laughs> Whoa, very scary. So there's the um, steepness there. Just couldn't get up because of the rain and um, we started sliding backwards and did a bit of a 180. Yeah, I, wow. It's awful road. I think there's another way in, aside from this, but um, I'm a little bit shaky now. <laughs> okay, how are you, Jerry? <laughs> you shaky? I thought we were going to flip it. I know. I thought we were going to flip it. Oh, oh I fun. thought so too. I thought we were going over sideways. Yeah. Woo, drama. Okay, so that's where our, our tuk-tuk ended up. And as you can see, whoo, shit. I'm a little bit shaky. I thought we were flipping for sure. He got to here and he started going backwards he rolled backwards and he couldn't and I, as we hit here he it swung itself so we were on two wheels smashed into there that flung us around luckily that we could have easily flipped and just rolled claire could have been underneath that tuk-tuk all the way so we just walked down that little road I believe there's another way into this area from that road. <laughs> Apparently there's a restaurant up here, but <laughs> I don't like your chances getting there in a tuk-tuk <laughs> based on our <laughs> recent experience. Anyway, there's a viewpoint over this side. It is very high up here, so great for um, having a good look over the town to get a real sense of the size of this place. Just coming up here, you see how many abandoned buildings or well, unfinished buildings there are. There's a distinct lack of traditional buildings in this city and I think that kind of contributes to how it feels here. We're just on top of some sort of unfinished structure here but it's certainly a big place. And the difference to Siem Reap is that it's hilly and that gives things a completely different feel. Like Siem Reap is so flat. Well, we started to walk down the hill and then we found ourselves kind of trapped inside this place called the 360 degree resort. We wandered around there for a little while, eventually found our way out, went back down to the main road and found another pass app to take us up to the pagoda by the correct road. So if you want to buy this beautiful construction, there it is for young cheap. Across the road from that construction. Second monk with. Hello. So stay. <laughs> We're going on the road now. The footpath has become too slippery and too wet, as you can see. Oh, look, it is very pretty. A lot of emaciated dogs around here. But the view should be amazing. There's even a sign here, look. What Le Pagoda visiting roadmaps? Oh, <laughs> excuse me. 
<laughs> I didn't realise there were monkeys on top of the signs. They're just hanging. Yeah, monkeys everywhere. That could well be the cutest welcoming committee I've ever seen. Look at them. They've certainly gone all aboard with the colour here. It's beautiful. He's in the milk. No, he's opened up the bottle. He's opened the bottle of milk. He's opened the lid. <laughs> oh, that's jackfruit, isn't it? Is it? Oh, jackfruit is usually on the on the. Yes, jackfruit goes from the um from the trunk. What's that then? Don't know. It looks exactly like jackfruit. We'll just get close up. Hello, kitten. Are you nice, kitten? Finally, we have a member of the yeah. species. Come here. Oh, he's, he's had a few fights. No, it's just a really cool coat. No, there's all hunks out of it, isn't there? No, I think it's just the colour. Yeah. Yeah. A pet? That's not to say. A pet? No, he just wants to meow at me. Okay, you can come along. Come along for a walk. I think we can go up here. So what happened on our second attempt? Parsap took us the same way. The poor bloke was going the way. I said, no, 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 no. Don't go, we have to go right around. Oh my god. I'm not going down there, That's looks, that looks like a death trap. It's cool though, just the... What, as you slide down and break your legs. No way I'm going down there. Because that means I've come back up again. <laughs> What's up, kitty? Yeah, spirit kitten, flying through the air, saving people with his kitten abilities, flying with his whiskers, for danger. So we found this lookout point. There's going to be another building around the other million buildings, another building to the port. I, I swear Claire takes you places that we could potentially get murdered and no one would ever find us again. Loves it, don't you, Claire? What? Murder points. <laughs> so this guy's the most secluded place that someone could just murder us and throw us down there and no one finds us for weeks. Well, there's the port down there. The rain's held off for the moment. It's a difficult place to get a sense of where the centre is. It's kind of strung out. And the hills. Hmm, quite difficult to get a sense of where you are in the city. Hey, the difference in um, stages of completion of these buildings like that one there is very much just a skeleton compared to some of the others we've seen. It's a very unusual pagoda. Very sort of jungly. A real sense of exploration. The ground is really slippery too, you've got to be careful. Oh look there's a statue of a monkey. That's funny. I wonder if there's ever a monkey on top of the statue of a monkey. And these trees with these, um, I think they're called cannonball, cannonball trees, for obvious reasons. <laughs> I don't think you want one of them dropping on your head. It's like there's a community of people that live kind of just south of the pagoda grounds and they seem to be very, very poor by the looks of um, where they're living conditions. just walking from 7-Eleven to Salo. So this is the biggest market in Sihanoukville. What an unusual um, layout. It's kind of lower than ground level. So 
dug it and You would think that um, when it rains a lot, there's a lot of water going to come rushing down these stairs. I hope the drainage is up to it. Don't know. Drive a truck through here. <laughs> Not a problem. There's some nice fruit here. Look at those grapes, they're enormous. They don't even look real, they're so big. It's a good thing about going home in a pass up, you don't have to worry about where you park the motorbike and going back to it afterwards. We're now in one of the streets just outside the market. That yeah, was pretty intense. Hello. 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 <laughs> We're just heading out for a walk close to the hotel and I think we'll see a bit of the coastline. The rain's held off for us, which is good. And it's not as um, humid as it was earlier today. So go down here and have a look. Look at this one, they've left a tree. That's crazy. <laughs> yes, maybe it's grown in the last, I don't know, handful of years. It's another shack attached to the front of this one. I'd say people are living in there. Well, this one seems to have made it a little bit further along than most. It's got walls for the most part. It's and there's a bit of... 25 floors. Yeah, and there's a bit of action on the um, premises too, like they are still building it. Caught in the act, Jeremy's trespassing. All right, so here we are up on top and we can see the coastline now. There you go. How do we get there? I don't know. It looks like another walk. We can't get to it. No, I don't know that we can. <laughs> we'll hop arrive this way. Yeah. <laughs> take a while. But look how big the, the space is when you see the truck. Oh yeah, it gives it a bit of scale, doesn't it? Scale, yeah. That's <laughs> they got, the truck. That's how tall it is and how big. They got motorbikes like parked in there. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Nobody seems to care that much that we're up here. Anyway. And more of a spectacle than anything else. Like these guys. They're getting the party started. It is a Saturday. Okay, we found some oceanfront to check out. This is Independence Beach, this one. There's a bit of fishing going on out there. There's some people in the water over there. I wouldn't be in there, I don't think. So we found the local, the locals hang out down here on the old 70s round chairs that you find in every Australian's living room in the 70s. So we sat down and got a beer, only a dollar, nice little view. We decided that the next day we would head to the beaches to the south of town and see if they're better than Independence Beach. We just got a pass out from the hotel down to Otres Beach. This has a very different feel. Just show you around quickly. Really nice um, paved walkway all along the foreshore here. It's nice. It's very clean. There's no rubbish down here, it's great. It does look very nicely um, taken care of. I'm not sure which islands we're looking at over there. 
but they do seem to be very close to the coast. Either that or the visibility is much better today than it has been in the other two days that we've been here. But we're just going to have a walk along here to the next beach up and uh, just get a bit of a sense of what it's like. There's a nice little building here. You can get ice cream or a cold drink or a coconut. Nice place to sit. It's all very, um, very civilised down here. Very nice. Very different feel to um, a little beach shacks at Independence Beach where we had stopped in for a beer yesterday. Much more of a family day out kind of feel here. So we're just in front of Brown Coffee and it's rammed, absolutely rammed. There's a line up at the back. This is really pretty. Look at all the people sitting there in the shade, enjoying life. This is like a Sunday outing, I think. And a nice bit of infrastructure here. I'm guessing that's a pretty place to sit and watch the sunset. That bridge is quite cute too. Unusual design. That's Ochtiel Beach, if I'm saying that correctly. And the rest of Sihanoukville up there to the north. The boys got the beers, 11 o'clock. Time to party. A different little beach around the other side and this one has a bridge over to an island. Well, little um, little boats here take you on day trips I guess. We come down to the water here and they do fishing lines and a boat, a boat for rent. How much is a boat? How much? $40 for three hours. That's not too bad. Does it include fishing line? Oh okay. So there you go, so you can go out in the boat for three hours for $40. So you get about, say, four people, 10 bucks each. Go out for three hours, grab some beers, happy days. I like the vibe here. Very chill. I think it'd be fun taking a boat out for three hours. Okay, the techno is pumping, the Gansbergs are flowing. And now for the next thing we're going to do is to walk from the hotel, just in a short loop around the block, to see some of these structures from ground level. Go up here. Fighting fish and goldfish. That's cute. Makes me think that people that live in these little apartments might want a little pet to look after. She probably couldn't have a cat or a dog or anything. Oh, something smells very Chinesey. Nice.
Okay, so here we have one. <laughs> and it has a laundry operating at the bottom. So as you can see, it's one of those structures and there's also a pool table inside. Probably people living in various levels. Yeah. Oh, there's even a tent set up in there. Can you see that? This is a KTV. And a USD KTV. God. I'm just standing outside here. I can smell Cigarettes. the stale smoke. Oh my God. <laughs> I think you'd have to throw away the clothes that you wore <laughs> if you went in there. That <laughs> looks like a Chinese pharmacy. What have we got here? Five star chicken. And <laughs> what is this place? Tea and ice cream. That's a Big Mac apparently for 2,000 real. What have you got there? You get the mixed. That's 50 cents. What's that cardboard thing? Is that to keep your hands yeah, yeah, clean? Yeah. Wow. It doesn't drip into it. Okay. You gonna taste it? Minty. Nice. Minty. Good. Mm. Okay. Let's see what's down here. Some good looking foods around here. There's a lot going on here. Fruit stand. Well, it seems to me the ground level of these places is being used. That's something, I suppose. So many apartment buildings. There we go, traditional Khmer building. Well. Steamy buns. Yeah. Oh, a little cafe. Yeah. Yeah, so ground level little shacks. They're not even using the structure of the building, they're just kind of in front of it almost. There's like a thousand motorbikes in there. Oh, this one's serving as a car park, a house. There's a bit of a shack to the back there. Yeah, it's pretty rough living. 
but at least it's um, up off the wet ground and a bit of shelter from the rain too. We've reached the international and domestic airport on the way home. There's three flights out of here today. It's a very small airport. I can't believe it's international as well. Thanks so much for watching this video about Sihanoukville. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts about the place. Have you been there before? Did you go before the Chinese came in their large numbers? Do you live there? What's your perspective on the place? Really interested to know what you think. We were very pleasantly surprised by the fact that we were very easily able to find beauty in the place. And we also found um, the spectacle of the unfinished buildings to be quite interesting and something um, very different to anything else that you'd see in Cambodia. So yes, leave your thoughts down below. We'd love to hear them and we're looking forward to hearing from you there. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.